Spanish website builders. Hello, hello. It's a birthday boy's birthday today. Happy birthday, Mark. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I wish we knew how to invite people on because I'd try and invite people one by one to sing you happy birthday. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, we still, we still need to do that, right? I feel not ready now. Like, you just reminded me I haven't loaded the presentation into Restream, but like, we can, I can share screen or, or we can do that in a moment. Maybe you could, if I give you the URL, like, you can, you can go add it in whilst, uh, okay. whilst I'm doing the intros. So, welcome, everybody. Um, it's my birthday. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to say what age I am. I was going to say what age I am. I'm not going to say age I am. So, uh, yeah. So, yeah. Welcome back. Um, Got some familiar faces in the stream. We've got, oh, we've got Walter. I don't remember seeing Walter before. Welcome, Walter. We've got Brian. I guess he's still got his merch bill. Still waiting for his merch, probably, but he's on the way. Uh, Eleanor, Chris, Birdie, Carly. Um, who else have we got? Oh, no, I've got, an, I've got another person that I don't know how to pronounce their name. I'm going to get insulted again for not pronouncing. What's this? Will. I don't know how to pronounce that, do you, Adam? I know you're not a good pronouncer anyway, in the best oh, of times. That's terrible. <laughs> terrible pronouncer. <laughs> but thank you for coming. Um, I'm sorry we can't pronounce your name. Maybe type it phonetically in the uh, in the, uh, in the chat and we can work out how to say your name. But um, uh, but thanks thanks for coming. Um, okay, so today's show is the eagerly awaited part three the finale of the buyer versus build uh, series that we've been running over the last couple of weeks. So for the uh, niche website builder show, uh, sorry, the, yeah, the niche website, sorry, the website investing show. Um, we, two weeks ago, we did the buy part one of the buyer versus build series, which was about buying and flipping websites and uh, you know, how you can go about that and kind of the success you can have with that. The build was uh, last week talking about how you build from scratch, either on a fresh domain or an expired domain. I spoke about two different case studies from my own personal portfolio of starting from scratch and from an age domain. And this is part three, buy versus build, kind of which is best. So we're going to go through that today. Before we move on. By the way. Thank you. I saw that. Um, don't forget, if you're new around here, to like and subscribe uh, to the channel. That will help us get in front of more people via the Google, uh, the yeah, YouTube algorithm. I did have a drink this morning, like 11, 12 o'clock, to celebrate my birthday, like a cocktail over brunch, which was a bit elaborate. But now I feel like I can't speak. I mean, that was um, five hours ago, six hours ago. I think it should be okay. You're um, lightweight. On our Christmas parties, you're lightweight. So. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. Joke marks the last man standing. So. <laughs> oh yeah, don't even go down that that, that, just con that conversation. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, so like uh, yeah, we um, yeah, that's that yeah. So like and subscribe, get in front of more people, uh, get more and more people on the stream every week, which is really good. Um, that said, as well, thirty-five likes, and we have a giveaway at the end of every show. So we have merch, which I'll share with you at the end, which is t-shirts, mugs, caps. Highly sought after merchandise, and um, that once it's shown on the on screen, everybody wants it. Everyone wants it. Tantalizing, it's tantalizing when you bring up that presentation. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, get liking, and uh, we will, yeah, we'll do a giveaway at the end of the show. Great, should we crack on to them? Yeah, let's do it. Awesome. While we bring this, oh, are you doing are you doing a transition? Oh. What's that purple in the background? That's not a It's usually this one. But oh hang on. Someone deleted the purple. I can't like oh, did I just delete the purple? God damn it. Oh, and something's gone wrong with my screen now. Hold on. I'm just gonna uh, unplug it and plug it back in. I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> this is professional. I'll just carry on, don't worry. It's all good. Um, go. I'm back now. So yeah, five versus build part three. Um yeah, so as I mentioned, we've spoken uh, the last couple of weeks about the two different merits of uh, buying a website from buying a website uh, and then building upon that foundation of the, the website that you purchased and then the build, which is just kind of starting from scratch. So we're going to talk about in this uh, the pros and cons uh, of both buying and selling 
and kind of the requirements you need to think about if you're buying. Oh, buying and selling. What am I talking about? Buying or building. That should be. <laughs> that's that drink. That's that drink from dinner time. <laughs> Ignore that. That should be buy, build, not buy, sell. So buying, building, the pros, cons, and requirements. And uh, we talk about hybrid version of that and then kind of summarize it all at the end um, before we get going. So. The other thing to, I guess, to mention is if you've got any questions, uh, anything to do with website investing, anything to do with building sites, growing sites, flipping sites, age domains, stick it in the chat and we'll we'll try and do uh, answer any questions as we go um, and, and kind of make sure that we kind of get them all done at the end too. So be sure to ask any questions uh, and we'll pick them up. So do you want to go through the pros of buying, Adam? Yes. I mean, it's only fair since as my, I was the for the buy-in, right? So I'll go through the pros and the cons of the buy-in. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I, I think for me, the, the biggest um, the biggest pro of buy-in on flipping websites is the potential for kind of big returns fast. Um, now, we'll talk a little bit later on about the ROI differences, but realistically, if you want to buy a website and flip it, you know, you can do that in the space of a couple of months. I, I think the, the shortest time I've ever held a website for was literally like 38 days and then I flipped it. So you, it can be very fast. It can be very slow uh, and there's, there's potential, there's loads of pitfalls, but you can make decent amounts of money relatively fast if you know what you're doing with the kind of buy, improve and then flip on um, kind of strategy, which is, which is what I, I quite like doing. Um, another pro of, of buying websites is basically that the site and the niche has already proven itself. Like as a beginner, one of the questions we get asked all the time is what niche should I go into? Like, as if me and Mark have got this secret list of amazing niches that nobody else is in and we only dish out to like favorite people. There's no such list. There's, there's not a, a, you know, a list of niches that are great for beginners or anything. And when you buy a website, you already know that that niche is hopefully decent because it's making money, it's proven itself, and the site is actually established in that space. Um, another another good pro is, is instant cash flow. I mean, <clears throat> you buy a site, and if, every, if you've done your due, due diligence right, the, the, the moment you switch it over to your ad network or the moment you put your affiliate codes in there should start producing cash for you straight away. So it starts to pay for itself from day one, whereas kind of if you build a website, there's a... You know that whole long process where, uh, you know, there's there's not much cash flow. It's very exponential towards the the end curve. But when you buy, you know, you've got instant cash flow, and you can either use that instant cash flow to either pay down debt if you've borrowed or, or you know you've taken money elsewhere to invest, or you can use that money uh, to reinvest into the website and grow it, which is kind of what I do. You know, I buy a website, I use to reinvest the money every month to improve it, and then I'll flip it on afterwards so i don't buy a website for its monthly cash flow normally i'm buying it that cash flow is going straight into content links improving the sites and i can flip it on quite quick yeah uh, yeah do you want to jump in these i feel like i'm just reading through them <laughs> what's your take on these mark yeah i think uh yeah i mean well yeah i mean it's pretty much as, as it says right so um yeah, I mean, it's, I, I totally agree with everything you've said there, but like, yeah. I mean, well, it's having them winning so far on the buy. <laughs> it's not competition. No, I know. I know. <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah, for sure. For like, uh, yeah, there's, yeah, there's obviously these are these are the the, the great things about buying. Um, particularly, I think the instant cash flow is, is a good, is something that's great because, I mean, as we as well, when we come onto the to the building part, it's a leap of faith, like it can really feel like a black hole that you're going into when you're starting out and it can be really, it can be disheartening. Like, you, and you, cause I guess when you're, when you're very first starting out as well, it's like, okay, right. I do, I do believe this is, uh, you, know, you, you kind of, you kind of go through these phases that you go, right. I do yeah. believe this is a thing, right. This isn't like some internet scam. Like this isn't some, I, I actually believe now that I can make some money from it and uh, from building sites online. And then you're going to go through the phase of, okay, so I'm going to do it. I'm gonna, and you start getting started. And then, then like, months go past and you're not really making much money, but you feel like you're putting loads and loads of effort in. Yeah. And then you get like, uh, this is like from my own process of thinking, I'm thinking, okay, well, and I know it's real and I know, and I'm putting like the effort in, but what if I'm not doing it right? 
Like, what if I, what if I've like picked the wrong niche, or what if I've, uh, I, I'm just writing the content wrong, the structure in the content wrong. There's so many like, like moving parts. It's like, what if I'm not doing yeah. this bit right, or the, or the keyword research I haven't done that correctly, or uh, like, what, like, I, okay, I'm doing all this effort, but how do I definitely know that I'm going to get a return? And I think yeah. like, that lag is so painful. And what you know, what we tell people often is. You just you just need to trust the process and you just just keep going because what yeah. what you could happen is because what a lot of people justify to themselves at some point is they say well i've done th three months of work and i'm just going to wait now and like see what happens and then if it if it, show, if it if it shows some success some success then like then, then i'll carry on and then i'll do some more and that's kind of the wrong mentality even as hard as it is hard as it can be because for a few reasons one well say it does say you do see some some growth so you do see things start to happen. Well, you've lost three months of time there where you like, like content takes a while to age, takes a while to rank. Like you've just, you've just lost three months of time or more where you kind of were just waiting. And if you, and then, and then you have people going, oh, I wish I'd just carried on. Like, and then I could, it, like, I'd be so much better and bigger and better off now. But then you also have like um, a situation where, you know, you're not even after six months, you're not guaranteed to see anything particularly good. Like sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. Sometimes it needs a bit more effort than that. But if you keep persisting and keep pushing, you're, you know, you're likely to get there in the end. But it means that you've sometimes you've got to have a really long period of just believing and believing that you're doing it right. You, you try, so, you know, just got yeah. to try and seek that support and confidence that you are doing it right. And I think that so buying and having that instant cash flow. And, you know, having a successful site that you could kind of review and like say, okay, well, this is how they did it. Like, it, it's great. Of course, yeah, it comes with some cons, which we'll come to. But yeah, that is so painful when you're first starting out at first time and the and the, the will to succeed has to be strong. Yeah. I feel like you just covered off some of your slides there as well. I feel like I have. <laughs> you're going to come on to in a bit. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I, some of the other the other parts here, which I don't think get mentioned enough in terms of uh, when you buy a site, and it, and it has to be a certain type of site, is um, you get access to different monetization methods. So, for example, uh, Ad Thrive's minimum uh, page view requirement per month is a hundred thousand. But if you already got a site with them, then your second one is twenty thousand. So if you already, if you buy a site that's already an Ad Thrive and you get the account, you know you can get the site into an Ad Thrive account in your name. The next time you build a site, you only have to get it to 20,000 to get in there, for example. Or I remember speaking to a lady early on when we started the agency, and she bought um, an, a, a business, essentially a portfolio of Amazon websites that came with its own Amazon rate card. Do you remember the view of those where you oh, get yeah. like your own personalized uh, commission? Yeah, stuff? that's right. Yeah. And it's a lot higher than like what you see on the website because you, you do lots of volume. Um, and then she was literally just hoovering up websites based on multiples of the standard commission, switching it over to her rate card, which I can't remember, it was almost double like what the standard, standard commission was. And she was instantly increasing. She couldn't sell the website on for 100%, like double the website, but no. she could double the income every month straight away just by because she had access yeah, to that. She had half the return on investment, you know, yeah, essentially, or half the multiple, effectively. Yeah. But she bought that. She bought that rate card that came with the business of portfolio websites. And I, and I have seen, at the time, I was like, how would you ever do that? But I have seen a couple of, over the last couple of years, a couple of people selling Amazon rate cards with, or custom rate cards with businesses, um, with sites. So they are out there. Um, and then the last part you kind of touched on that is you, you get to see how a successful site is run. You know, if it's a decent site and it's making money and it's gaining traffic and it's growing, you get to see how the content structured. You get to analyze the backlinks. You get to look at, you know, the category structure and the back end. Um, you know, you get to see all of those things. You get to see what affiliate programs they're working with. Do they have any kind of special rates with affiliate programs? How have they negotiated that? If you're if you're lacking in skill set, so you know, if you don't know how to set up an email funnel, like an email opt in, an email campaign, if you buy a website that has that, chances are that's going to come with a sale and you can, you know, might come with convert kits or whatever. You log in, you see what the, how the emails are structured, how they're set up, what that funnel looks like. You, you, you get to see all those kinds of things. Um, and also you get, sometimes you get access to different assets as well. So I bought a website that came with a YouTube channel. Uh, apart from our niche website builders, YouTube channel, I've never 
build a YouTube channel. I wouldn't know where to start really, apart from, you know, we've got a team to help us with this. But that already came with it. And if you wanted to continue growing that, you literally then just have to keep pushing content. All the groundwork is done. That's true. There's a whole lot of pros we've missed off there, like potentially. Yeah. So, well, I mean, I suppose it comes with H, potentially with age domains as well. But, but yeah, the other pros is like it's got a mailing list, for yeah. example, or it's got a community or a Facebook group that I keep talking about. And like, yeah, it's, it's already got some maybe some following and some assets with, with it. Yeah, that's the other, the other thing. Yeah. Yeah. That we did not include on there. Yeah, I think that's it really in terms of the pros. I mean, there's probably more that I've forgotten. We missed. <laughs> yeah. Since we just picked up one there. But yeah. Yeah. But there's also okay. cons as well. Do you want to go cons? Yeah, let's do cons. Uh, and the cons are, I mean, there's, there's obviously much higher risk when you're buying a website. Multiples at the moment are just ever increasing. You buy in sites on 30, 40, sometimes up as high as 50x multiple. That's a big chunk of money typically for a site, you know, for a site that's for sites making thirty a thousand dollars a month. You pay in thirty to fifty thousand for that website. It's high risks. I think it's high reward, high reward, but it's definitely higher risks. You've got to have access to that lump of capital to buy it. Most websites below a certain size, I say below a certain size, like kind of below a million dollars, really don't do seller financing or very few do. You have to have all of the cash up front. Um, and, and whether that's your own cash or you borrow cash, I know in the USA you can get an SBA loan to buy websites with, but somewhere or another you've got to come up with cash to buy a website, which is risky. Well, yeah, and, and the other, I mean, the other, the, the reason it is a risk, I guess, is because there's a number of things here. You, you're investing quite a lot of money, which means, uh, but if you know a Google algorithm update could come along the very, the very next day, and 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 then wipe out half of the investment that you've made it could be something like you know if you haven't done good due diligence or you haven't been able or you've missed something in terms of due diligence maybe the site isn't quite making as much money as you thought it did or or there's this yeah. risks associated with the way that the site's been built or blinks of being like so there's you know there's, there is there's especially with the terms of google updates and stuff there's, there's there's risk outside of your control so you know you're investing a lot in one go um and, and that's, I don't want to be scaremongering here, like, because there's lots and lots of good sites that, are, that could be good, but you got to understand that there is a risk associated with that. Um, yeah. Well. yeah. So I, I've flipped like 10 sites or bought, bought, bought and sold 10 sites this, this last year, last 12 months. And I think pretty much all of them have been a success. But the year before that, I bought a site and literally two weeks later, a Google update hit it and it lost like 80% of its value overnight, like straight away. And then, Going back to to when the last Amazon update, uh, where they changed the commission commission structure, I almost got stung there as well. I was literally my money was in escrow buying another website when they announced the commission changes, and luckily I, I could I backed out of the sale. But if I if I didn't, like instantly would have lost uh, like thirty percent of the site's value because because of an Amazon an Amazon rate change rather than a Google change. So there's there's external risks that you, you kind of have to try and factor into. Now, what are you going to do with the site? Yeah. No. Um, I think another one of the cons is is the ROI can, can be smaller. It can be huge, uh, depending. And I guess this this all comes down to your time horizon of how long you plan on holding a website. Um, you know, we looked at some of Mark's ROI numbers last week, and they're hundreds of percent essentially um, over you know the course of a of, of a year or two. Um, whereas you know. My typical ROI is is nowhere near a couple of hundred percent, but I only hold the website for a you know six to eight months to twelve months. So I think the ROIs can be smaller. Um, yeah, I, do you agree with that, Mark? Yeah. So yeah, for example, if you bought a site for for ten thousand, you might keep it for a few months, improve it a little bit, and then sell it for uh, for thirteen thousand and make three thousand, which percentage wise isn't you know, it's still thirty percent or whatever, but like uh, yeah. like. You know, because if you scale that up and say, say you had the budget to buy a site for a hundred thousand, well, you could make thirty thousand in say three months, which is a good return, but it's small in a percentage wise. So, you, yeah, it depends at like what level you're kind of doing it. But the returns, are, in terms of percentage wise, they can be smaller. But depending, you just if you want to make ten, twenty, thirty, then you've got it's got to be more that you're spending on, yeah. on the outlay of the site. 
unless you plan on holding it long term. And I think the returns can be just as, you know, maybe just as good, maybe not just as good, but they can still be hundreds of percent. I think oh, yeah. you plan on holding it for, for a long term. Mm-hmm. Um, the other big con, and I think this is a really big one, um, is, is just due diligence can be overwhelming. Like, when you're buying a website, there's so many working, like moving parts, you know, you've got to do all the kind of checks that we've talked about on our aged domain streams for a website that you're going to buy anyway, about the anchor text, the link profile, but then you've also got to add in the complexities of, is the content any good? Does it have any cannibalization issues? Are you planning on buying a site and merging it with another site? Like how would that work? Um, where does the traffic come from? Is it all organic? Is it social? If it's social, how stable is that traffic? Uh, you know, does the, all the traffic come from tier one countries? Does it not? There's, there's so many different parts of due diligence um, that you should look at. And that might be a good topic for another stream mark one, you know, in, in a couple of weeks is due diligence when you buy a website, probably a good topic. But for, for a new person coming into this, it's really hard to know if you're buying anything that's good or not. Uh, and uh, there's just been some there's been some examples recently across marketplaces where, like, recently um, uh, there was a website listed with a broker that had a trademark in the name. Uh, like, if you bought that without realizing, it could be screwed in six months or whatever. Or there was another one where there was a, a website about popcorn built on an expired domain about sharks. And on the face of it, if you look at the metrics, the traffic was going up and the revenue was going up. But... You know, someone who's been around a little bit longer clearly realizes that's just a ticking time bomb before it's going to drop off a cliff kind of thing. So, yeah, due diligence just be really overwhelming sometimes. Yeah. Anything to add on that? No, I totally agree. Like there's just so many. I mean, when we're doing due diligence, we, we've mentioned how we do it for age domains. A lot of that is very similar for websites, although there are other aspects of websites you need to look at as well. Um, like the credibility of the seller and things like that. But um, yeah, uh, yeah that's, it, it can be a huge task. And all you can do is the best you can do in terms of due diligence and go and get some help with that if that's something that you're, that you're not familiar or, or experienced with. The other thing which kind of comes into due diligence as well, which uh, I think scares a lot of people buying websites, is the whole like transaction, like paying the money. How do you make sure you pay safely and securely and, you know, like, how do you make sure you're not getting ripped off? And then once that's done, like, how do you transfer the website? If you're if you're new to the space, transferring and migrating the website can be really daunting. Swapping out affiliate links is, can be really daunting. If you don't do a good job of it, then the old and you leave some of the old links in there, the old owner is going to get commission. Like, there's there's all those kind of factors to to take into consideration as well. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, and you've got. Content and links may not be to your own standards. Uh, you see, you typically can tend to see this on the on the lower price sites, like uh, the, the the beginner sites, the starter sites, sites with just a uh, you know a couple of hundred dollars a month. You can't see it on bigger sites, but you know what if what if the site is doing reasonably well, it's growing, but the content is clearly non-native English or it's being written by AI and not edited, and it just doesn't make any sense. Like just because the site is growing now doesn't mean that that's going to continue if the content is rubbish or the links have been dodgy or they've, you know, used PBN links and they, they plan to remove them after they've sold the site to you. Uh, there was um, uh, there's a group of, uh, of websites going around right now uh, in the Facebook groups, apparently, a group of golf websites, which all use the same PBNs and link to each other and they're trying to sell them all individually. And clearly, once they've sold, they're just going to remove the PBNs and not linked to each other anymore and they're going to they're going to lose some kind of ranking and revenue there so you, there's lots of things around content and links to be mindful and lots of pitfalls um and you've got two decisions with that either you pass on pass on the site straight away and think i don't even want to touch this or you think that could actually be an opportunity you think the content isn't great the website is ranking can i go and edit that content can i make it better can i rewrite it and that could actually be an opportunity if you know what you're looking for same with the links. Can I yeah. disavow a bunch of links? Can I get a, you know, Rick Lomas to do his toxic uh, link, detox, link, link detox? And then can I build new good links in in place of those? Um, so it, it's a con, but it could also be an opportunity as well, I think. Yeah. Cool. And last one. 
Yeah, the last one is just, uh, just kind of a minor one, but it, it can be important is just where the images come from. Like, yeah, Do, are, they, are they stock images? Are they just copy and pasted from Google? Uh, have you got Amazon images on the website that have just been downloaded and re-uploaded and it goes against Amazon T's and C's and puts your account at risk? Like, you've got to look at that as well. I mean, it, it, it sets mine. It's, it's like, I mean, I th hopefully this is the kind of thing you'd pick up in your due diligence anyway, but like, it's not necessarily minor if uh, if they're copyrighted uh, images and you've got hundreds of them because you'll get yeah. potentially charged hundreds of dollars for every image that you have on the site. So it could be expensive. Um, so you want to make sure that you've got confirmation from who you're buying the site from, where they got the images from, prove where they got the images from, that they get them from. If they just Googled them, then this is a problem and maybe something that you can kind of negotiate price down on if you were then to have to replace all of the images out with properly licensed uh or free, uh, uh, you know, free to use images. So there's a yeah. point of negotiation there as well at that point, potentially. Awesome. So the requirements for buying. Yeah, well, you obviously need capital. You can't buy a website without any money, right? <laughs> That's the obvious one, you can't buy if you don't have any money. Yeah. Um, you've got to be happy with all those risks that we've just said. Like you've, you've got to be happy that it's high risk, potentially high rewards, depending on you know how, how that strategy goes for you. But, You've got to be comfortable that you're buying a website today for a big chunk of money typically and tomorrow something could happen external that means that that value is 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 dropped or or, or reduced significantly so you've got to be happy with that um and then also you, you've got to have really the skill set not only to do the due diligence like you 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 personally have either got to have it or the team to do your due diligence but then you've also typically got to have the skill set or the team in place to help with the technical improvements or the content improvements or the link build improve improvements, there's, there's typically no point buying a website and then doing nothing with it. Like that defeats the whole purpose. You want to buy it to improve it, to increase the value to then either keep or, or, or to sell it. What you don't want to do is just buy it and then do nothing. So somewhere along the line, you've got to have some kind of skill set, you or your team to, to make the site better. Um, and then the last one is, is you just need good deal flow. And I've I told Mark to put good in, in capital letters because there's deal flow everywhere. Everywhere you look, there's Facebook groups, there's marketplaces, uh, and and there's lots of um, not great sites everywhere, basically, on, on bro with brokers, who marketplaces, who Facebook groups. And if you can get good deal flow, then that just makes your job of due diligence and finding good websites and buying right just so much better, so much easier. So, you know, as you do more and more of it, I think access to good good deal flow is is really important. Yeah, for sure. Cool. Um, so I've uh, there's a few questions, but they're kind of uh, not directly related. So we'll catch up. We'll catch them at the end. I pinned a few Adam in there. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll pick those up at the end. If you've got any questions, be sure to ask. We're at 22 likes so far. The bit lower, lower number of viewers uh, at the moment than, than last week, in which we instantly got 25 likes um, and 35 overall easily. Um, but we've got, 20, oh, we've got 20 people watching at the moment. So hopefully that'll kind of uh, pick up in the second half. And But yeah, if you've got, if you haven't liked, like now so you can get uh, access to some of the merch. Niche website better as much. Um, and um, definitely Mate, get to ask come, any questions. They'll come streaming in when you get the, the merch presentation up later. Don't worry about <laughs> it. As soon as they see. <laughs> For sure. Okay. Right. So let's go on to let's speed up a little bit. Build pros. The one of the big pros about building a site is you get to do it your way. Or I almost put the right way, but I guess so, like everyone has their own opinion of what's right. So you get to do it like your way. So you get to structure the site how you like to structure your sites in in the right way, uh, probably in your own eyes of what the right way is. So you get to, to to create the site architecture nicely in the silos or however you you do like to build your sites in the way that you want to build it. You get to implement your own content strategy from the beginning. Like you're not you're not tied up with like any baggage I've put there from what the person did before. So you. Typically, you don't really want to go messing about with uh, with uh, the structure of a site if you're buying one, especially if it's worth a lot, because messing about the structure can completely change uh, how Google sees the site and where you might rank and it might affect earnings. So you kind of have to live with what you're given to some extent. Now, of course, yes, you can do that, but there is elements of risk with that. And generally, 
we try to avoid like changing structure too much. Yep. Um, so you get to do it your way. Um, there's no baggage. And I say guaranteed white hat. I'm assuming you're a white hat person. If you're not a white hat person, then you can do what you want. But if you, like, hopefully you'll pick up any kind of black hat techniques that have been used on a site in the due diligence phase of buying a site. But, you know, you can't always, it's not always, always easy to identify. You don't, and you don't ever really know what someone's done historically on the site that you're purchasing. Whereas if you're starting from scratch, it's all yours. You know what's happened to it. You know everything that's done on it. And you know that you've done it your way or the right way. Um, yeah, you can say something there, Adam? Or? No, no, I think that's okay. pretty much spot on, really. Oh. Cool. So budget can be as low as you like. So by that, I mean, all we really need to get going is uh, to pay, be able to pay for hosting. Um, and if you can, you know, normally you can get a website together pretty easily with a WordPress theme. Um, if you're really not technical, then you can kind of get a little bit of help from that. It will cost you a couple hundred dollars probably to get someone to set up a theme for you. Um, but other than that, if you're going to be writing all the content yourself, if you're going to do any link building yourself, it's all it's all time. It costs you in time, I guess, rather than in money. Um so the budget in terms of money can be as kind of low as you as low as you want it to be um, from the beginning. Um, potentially a big return on investment in the long term, as Adam mentioned. You know, the, once, because the outlay is very low. So say you just did it all yourself. You've ex maybe invested a lot of time time in that, and, and you know, depending how you view view time, time being the most valuable <laughs> currency. Um, but you know, you haven't had to put uh, so much money into it at the beginning. So if you've you could almost say that your, the website build has been free to a certain extent. You might have spent a couple of hundred dollars over a couple of years in money. But uh, so, you know, if you can then sell a site for a decent sum, the return on, the, of, of return on investment money wise is obviously very high uh, yeah. in, in that respect. Even if you outsource um, as well, generally, you know, because you're when you're buying a site, you're buying a site that's already made it, you're paying a high multiplier for that. When you invest in content, um through you know for example like niche website builders good example um then you know you there's an investment there and um but you know ultimately when you sell the site still the return on investment should be you know pretty high um as we showed in the last week's show um and it's generally better if you want to build a long-term business and that's arguable i guess but what i really mean by that is that again you get to plan what a business will be from the beginning what that site or that business will be from the beginning you, you, that could be part of your strategy. So you're starting out and you go, okay, today it's going to be a blog on a content site, but in the future it's going to, I'm going to run courses or I'm going to open up a physical store or whatever. Like you can, you can, you get to craft that, that story and that brand from the beginning. Cause you generally have to, you, well, you'll, you'll have to take whatever brand the brand is when you buy a site, whereas you can, you can invent your own brand when you start from scratch. Yeah. Unless you're buying an extra domain, then you've got, kind of got the same problem. Yeah. <clears throat> Okay, build pros, build cons. So the cons, it should have been apparent by now, it's just it's just slower. You know, if you're starting from, from scratch, expect to wait, you know, six, seven, eight, nine, twelve months if you're on a fresh domain before you really see any kind of action. Um, and again, like we said before, you might be putting a lot of time in into what seems like a black hole for a long period of time. Um, if you're on an age domain, that can be quicker. It's not it's generally is quicker, but it, it ranges from really quick to quite quick. Uh, generally, it doesn't take you know as long as twelve months if you're in, if you're reinvesting into it over that period of time. But you know, it, 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 some sites take literally a couple of weeks. Some other sites still take six, seven, eight months to really start to see um, to, to to start to get going. But always, the value of the age domain is that. Once you do get there, you st you've still got that backlink profile that you can kind of work with over time. You may, it may have taken longer for the engine to get started. Once the engine started, you still have the benefit of that uh, age domain yeah. in, in the long term. Um, and you might need more skills to help you get set up if you're not familiar with how to, to set up WordPress or a theme. And if that might be a bit daunting for you, so you may need some help or some skills to do that. And to get started, you just might need to like, to validate or feel confident that you've done the right uh, niche research or the keyword research. And that's something you probably want to run by a community uh, talk about them, depending on how much you want to reveal about what you're doing, which some people can be sensitive about. Um, 
but also you know there's services that will kind of kind of help you with that as well um including niche website builders who you know for any content they're right we'll also do keyword research and and help you find a niche and help you with niche selection if if that's something you're struggling with and um another con is the opposite of what we said before there's no cash flow from day one you, you get at least you get at least when you buy a site you're getting money from the from the word go start a site should be apparent by what we said now it's slower you definitely won't get it from day one but it will take yeah it's going to take longer to get there yep so the requirements of building is you have to have time to grow like you, you like you're depending on your outset like everyone, everyone wants you know everything something right now today right everyone wishes that they could buy a site or start a site on an age domain two weeks later it's making ten thousand a month like everyone wants that but you know, if you're looking, if you just start, if you get your mentality thinking long term, thinking this is, you know, I'm, I'm, this is not, I'm not in it for the, for the quick gratification. I'm in it for the long term. If you've got no rush and think about it in those terms, then you just got to be prepared to do that. And all of these things kind of fall into that that thing as well. So you need to have patience. You need to have belief in the process, as I said before. Like, you, you, if you don't believe, you know, you've, you've got to really believe that it's going to work and keep investing time or money into a black hole until you kind of get there. Um, and a relentless drive to succeed because you just have to be strong mentally. Like I said before, like it, it, it's not easy the first time you start. It's not easy with the first time. It's not easy when you're starting out in this website investing world. It can feel like um, it's not going to work or you're doing it wrong, but you just need to be relentless and you reap the rewards longer term. Once start site starts making money, you can reinvest that money to grow the site further and making the asset bigger. You're not putting any new money in on new time. And then, as that gets even bigger, you can then start to to use that income to start off other sites and actually start building a portfolio of sites, which kind of lowers your risk over time and can then be a really serious and kind of healthy income for you. Yeah, I heard course, someone uh, someone talk about uh, it's called the J curve. I think it's like a SaaS business, SaaS model kind of term, where it's you're investing, 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 losing money essentially, and then all of a sudden it hits the bottom of the curve and then it flies back up. And then you're back into profit and you're doing really well. But that downward slide on the J curve for your first time is really, really hard. <laughs> like you have to have faith in the process and just be relentless, like you say, keep going. Um but yeah, I don't know. I don't know if it's an, I don't know if that's a popular term or not. I don't know if it was the first time I'd ever come across it, but it made sense yeah. then. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Awesome. And of course you need to have resources, that's time or money. Or both. If you yeah. really want to Double down on time and money. So you need you need you need one or the other to be able to to succeed there. Cool. So buy and build hybrids. So longer term, a hybrid approach may be best. You'll find that a lot of people sit in one camp. They have a prefer, preferred way of doing things. You have a buying or building. You do. But I think there are people that, especially over time, if you started off as a builder, but then you get, then you start having some money that you can invest in sites. I think that's that's. Uh, but some people then once they have the money, they'll only still just stay in the buy and flip mode and we never want then they can't be haven't got the patience for like the long the long run again. But I think personally I think a hybrid of both is good. So you build from scratch for the long term R ROI for when you can. You believe in the process, you know it's gonna work. You just get those get some sites going when you found a good niche or a good age domain to work with. Um and then look or but you know, stay on the lookout for short term opportunities like sites that are underpriced or under monetized. Um, with like upside potential that you can kind of flip, you know, confident with the experience and the skills that you've got, you can kind of make adequate changes that the return on investment is going to be good enough that you can do that in a short period of time. So I, I think hybrid approach is good for that for, you know, just for day to day cash flow to, to one, on one level, and then the nice kind of chunks of money and flips uh, over time as well. Also, I think if, if you start with a build and then you do the hybrid where you buy as well typically the skills that you've learned building the website will then help you to buy a website and improve a website that you just bought so it kind of makes sense almost to build a website from scratch learn everything learn what good content is learn how a site should be structured and then when you come to buy a website you can easily say well that's not structured right or that content's not great this is what i would do to improve it so yeah definitely a, a hybrid approach is good yeah Awesome. So in summary, so which is it? 
by our build? Of course, as you probably suspected, the answer is it depends. So it depends on your own circumstances. Do you have budget to spend on a, are you, do you have an appetite for the risk that kind of comes with that? Like if you do have budget and it's your only $100,000, I wouldn't recommend spending $100,000 on a site. But, you know, if, uh, you know, even if you are quite risk adverse, probably not the wisest idea. If you have $100,000, maybe maybe spend 10 or 20 to start with um, uh, and you know, kind of spread that a little bit. Um, so, yeah, have, have an appetite to risk for risk to, to a certain level. But um, but just, and I, I guess something that we always say is just remember, don't run before you can walk. Unless you have the budget and you're kind of getting some assistance, start small with one site and make sure it's successful before you start building out your portfolio. A lot of people just, again, it's that gratification of like, I want to get there faster, so I'm going to start five sites and I'm going to work on five sites. Like, you're just spreading yourself too thin. It's just going to take, like, you're not going to give any one site enough time and attention to be able to be successful with that. So you need to apply it, push everything in you. In. And, and like I say, the only exception to that is if you have a large budget and you can invest by probably outsourcing, if you can start five sites and you've got the money to invest in five sites and you want to outsource it all, and therefore by proxy, you can dedicate as much time to each site, then maybe you want to do that. And we've talked about this in the past as well, Adam, where yeah, it's actually quite a good way to do it if you have got the finances there because of the sites you start, you generally find a couple of couple of standouts, a yeah. couple of winners, and you go, well, okay, I'm going to keep these other sites, but they're more long term. Now I'm going to go for the winning double ones and double down on these ones. And that's generally the best tactic because they've started showing success. You know, why why um, keep trying to push up the limping horse, which you can still keep and still work on and it's just taking a bit longer. But if, something, if something's showing you the potential and you're just going, well, double down on that one. Um, yeah. And, and do yeah, that. sure. So, can also, if you if you build if you're building, you can also use that snowball approach where you build one, and make it successful, and then use the cash flow to fund number two. And usually, that cash flow will allow you to outsource site number two. Similar to similar to what you said last week with your case study. You know, you site number one, you did fifty percent of the writing yourself, and you did lots of the work. Site number two, you've done none of the work. You've outsourced it all. Um, yeah. So yeah. And that's that snowball can be really powerful if you use site number one to pay for site number two, and then site number one and two are cash flow enough to build site number three faster. And then before you know it, you have got the resources to build four or five at a time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I say before you know it, I say that like quick <laughs> over time, you'll have the resources to build five or six at the same time from the cash flow for the others. It's not going to be a quick process, but it's definitely you can, it's definitely achievable. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so we've got questions here that we can kind of pick up. Um, I also realized that we there's a couple of things we were going to talk about today on today's show, but I've, I've, in all of the excitement at the start of the show, I forgot to like ask how you're doing and stuff. So we'll, we'll come to the things that we were going to talk about in today's show. Well, I, I guess also uh, Thursday, uh, I'm, uh, I'm always strapped for time and we've got 17 minutes to do questions and Wheel of Fortune. So maybe that's a good thing. We just got cool. straight into it. Yeah, let's rip, let's rip through these questions. I'll yes. see. Yeah, but I still want to do that. Oh, okay. We'll see. If we've got enough time, we don't have time. Okay. So from Tim, how old does a uh, domain have to be before it's considered age? A day, an hour, a minute, a second. Like, that's, that's the answer. Like once, once it's, once, it, it's like when you, uh, I, I know, I know Tim well, so I'll put it into his terms. Now, once you put in the, the once you put the whiskey or the, uh, <laughs> what was it? Not whiskey. What is the, yeah, you need is whiskey. But like, once you put the whiskey in to age, it's aging from day one, from second one. So like, once you, once the site is indexed by Google, it's aging from that very moment it gets started. Okay. So an, a site that's aged for one hour or one day isn't particularly useful, but some, the longer it's aged, the generally like the better over time. So the more years that it's got on it, uh, like the better. Yeah. And Tim, uh, and is it more desirable based on content or age? Uh, revenue is really based on, isn't it? When you're yeah. buying a website, it's based on it's desirable based on the revenue that it makes. The other, the other fact, like age and content, are secondary. The yeah, the, the value, the desirability is it, how much money is it making every month, and then you yeah. look at well, is that because it's age or content or links or whatever? Yeah, I'm not sure this is helping me. We'll call you on like 
Yeah, Don Cor Corleone, like Will Corleone. I'm pronouncing that the last bit wrong. It's from The Godfather. Will, Will Corleone. Oh, Don. Okay, Don Corleone. Okay, Win Will Corleone. Will Corleone. Will Corleone. Oh man, I can't say it still. <laughs> Will Corleone. <laughs> Try and say that yeah. later on after a couple more cocktails. We will be. <laughs> be all right then. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> thank you for the great content. No problem. I just started building a niche blog course site this week from Wales. Nice one, Anthony. Where, where um, in Wales? Where yeah, in Wales know, you? Yeah, let us know where you are uh, from in Wales. But um, yeah, great to hear you got started. That's awesome. Um, don't give up, as we said. Uh, Walter, when buying, would it be risky changing the, the theme on the website? Mm. Yeah, I think so. Typically. I think, I think it is. Uh, it, it, if you keep the URL structure the same, then it's not so risky. I would say, but um, you do you want to you want to do it unless what you've got what you're working with is, is really hindering you and is like really bad and like doesn't allow you to like have great ad placements or something like that if you're monetizing like there's got to be a reason like it's a really old theme that just doesn't comply with a lot of like modern standards and stuff like that. I would probably try and redesign in the theme work with what you got if you can. The other thing as well, just to consider on that, is when you change the website theme, typically if it's if it's monetized through display ads, you're going to lose revenue in the short term. So if you can time it as well, so you change the theme in quarter one, you don't want to do it in the run up to Q4 when ad revenue is at the highest. You want to do it Q1 when it's at the lowest. So try and time it as well if you're going to do it. Yeah, sweet. Uh, personally, because of circumstances, starting off with building one site from scratch, hopefully the long term is to go hybrid absolutely bill like good yeah just get successful with that one first um persist stay strong and uh see it through and uh you'd be glad you did it the other side um well, uh, let's have a look bourbon that's what i was trying to say tim's bourbon i think i've i think i've per perfectly just articulated that to, to tim now so <laughs> he knows what you're on about he knows well. um there you go. I think we, I don't know which way I, I said it the same way, several different ways. So one of them was right. Wales rules. We've got a couple of Welsh people in here now. It's really yeah, good. It's quite funny, isn't it? That's turned out like that. Uh, and let's see what uh, Adrian's saying. Uh, there is a difference from a domain and a website. Buying a domain and not building a site on it and letting it age doesn't help at all. Correct. Um, yeah. So if you just buy a domain and you had it sitting in your GoDaddy account for 20 years, that is not an aged domain, sadly, even if they, even if you sat there with it for 20 years. So it only starts aging once it's indexed by Google and that's when it's aged. So sadly, if you've had a domain for a long time and never, not, never put anything. So if you ever plan to do something with a domain one day, the best thing, but you don't want to do it right now, the best thing you do is just stick any old WordPress install on it. Maybe put a couple of posts on it, but just get just get something indexed in Google and then it's starting to age. And hopefully when you do pick it up, it's going to just get going a little bit quicker than if you were starting from scratch. But it's like starting from scratch otherwise. Um, okay. Oh, yes. And lots of people earlier said happy birthday, which I didn't really kind of pick up on. But thank you very much for saying happy birthday, everybody. Um, awesome. So, how, many likes? how many likes are we on? This is the Well, thing. this is it. 29 so we're not even there oh. so i've got to show that i've got to show the merch now haven't i for this will pump it. it up this will pump this will... it up <laughs> okay so let's get the music out oh no 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 oh, should we get the music for the merch? yeah i'll, I'll have the music it? i'll get the music on i'm gonna pick i'm gonna pick down tempo today oh nice oh that's i like it birthday music so what what I was, what I was going to talk about while we're showing the merch is a couple of things we're going to talk about today's show. One, you've got silver hair. <laughs> well, you can't really see. I, I wonder if I put it in the light. Like, yeah. I know there was the big. There was going to be the big thing about your silver hair and your silver beard, and like you can't really notice the hair too much. <laughs> and the beard, mean? the guy couldn't do right. So, yeah, silver. He did me silver highlights, and then he said, "I don't do facial hair," which was just like, "Why did you come then? I wanted my beard and my hair dyed." So Anthony's in South Wales. We've narrowed it down a little bit further. <laughs> cool. Carly's dad's oh. from Wales. Does that count? Mm, kind of. Ish. I think so. I think we'll include you in the, in the cool Welsh crew, Carly. Don't worry. Okay. So, oh, hang on. Hang on. Share screen. 
It's that cocktail, mate, screwing you up this afternoon. Okay, let's do it. This is the merch. This is what you're buying for. Let's just, just, just get rid of that. Let's make it full screen. Oh. That still doesn't seem right. What's going on there? Yeah, I don't know. Okay, I'm going to go full screen. Yeah, anyway, this is the merch. Different colors. We've got the new Swipes Up Builders logo. We've got a choice of many colors. We've got a different style here with the, the icon version of the logo. we got mugs. Different designs again. If you choose, choose a mug, tell us what you want. Depends on to not say which design they want, which design, which color, and of course the caps. What, what, we, what we can start doing as well is um, so people who have won, we've asked them to send us photos when the merch arrives. Maybe we can, with their permission, can start adding them photos, the photos they send in at the end of this PowerPoint. Oh, so then we can show nice. real life models, make the foam yeah. more. You mean real life? What's this is you without a beard? We already established that. <laughs> <laughs> is that you then, the, the, the woman? No. <laughs> I got the hair for it, right? Now. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, that's, like, that's what I look like with my hair down. <laughs> and with that a beard. Um, okay, Greg's got a question. Let's see how many likes we've got. Before we do that. I'll answer, I'll answer this one, yeah. So, so three. Um, yeah, Greg, there, there definitely is, I think. Um, Sometimes you can like you can put off starting a website because you're waiting for an expired domain, like an age domain to come along, the right age domain, and you, you just need to start. Like start it on a fresh domain if there's nothing available. And then if the right one comes along, you've got two options. If it's brandable and you haven't spent a ton of time with your brand, like branding on your on the site that you've started, then you can move the content over to the age domain if you wanted to. Or if you've spent a ton of time, you like the brand that you've started. Um, you can you can three hundred one redirect the the age domain into your into the site you've started from scratch and power it up that way. So you've got a couple of options, but yeah, there's de I think there's definitely benefit in there. Yeah, awesome. We've got merch fans here. Like we maybe maybe we just start we start the uh, the brand right brand niche website builders. <laughs> right, let's let's do the let's do the spin. We're not, we're not there yet. Can't do the spin. Oh. Right, <laughs> okay, so the, uh, the other thing is that if you want uh, if you want to be in the merch, we're going to assume we, do, we, do, we need one more like. We're going to assume that we're going to get there. So if you want to be on the merch, you've got to type something in the chat. If you don't type something in the chat, then you ain't going to be in the draw because that's how YouTube works. We need you to have typed something in the last two minutes or so for you to be counted in the draw because that's how we copy and paste know. it out of YouTube. So start typing in the chat if you want to be in the merch draw and I'll for give a, a hat hand. yeah for a hat for a mug or for a t-shirt yeah i need to uh we need to add the transition into this we only got a transition for the website investing show we do have one we just haven't uploaded it just need to get that in chris if you're listening we need to get that in chris chris come in <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 37 now. It oh, happens. We made it. There we go. Okay. Give it a couple more, a couple more minutes. Well, a couple, another minute for people to get in. And then we've got. What, what's the plan for your birthday, Mark? What's the plan for your birthday? Uh, 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 oh, I wouldn't go there. I, I haven't really got any plans. That's, like, there's, there's not much. Hopefully, we'll go for dinner. Drink, drinking, though, right? Drinking, having some drinks tonight. Mate, mate, no, I haven't got. I've got, got school stuff to do tonight. Not oh, my yeah. school, but for my kids' school. So. Unfortunately, how inconsiderate of having that on your birthday? Like, didn't they know? No. No. Right, we're gonna get everybody. The other thing I was gonna chat about was my NFTs because I've got my NFTs now. I'm gonna tell everybody about like that, but like, we'll have to save that for next time. Wait, next did week. you get a good one though? Oh, well, I have to reveal that, but yes, I did. I think so. Uh, there's, there's lots of facets to it, so we'll cover that next time. Uh, another quick one from Greg for a website with sub niche topics. Does it make sense to buy a smaller website within that specific topic? I'm assuming you mean and then move the content over and through and redirect the, the domain in. Then yes, it does. Uh, I'm always on the lookout for for websites that are sub niches or shoulder niches of sites I've already got to buy and merge together. Um, Mark talked about it on one of his case studies where he bought a smaller website. It wasn't in a, in a sub niche, it was in the same niche actually. And he moved the content over and redirected everything and that gave it a nice little boost as well. Um, so yeah, definitely. Awesome. So I'm gonna share my screen and reveal. Oh, oh look. Mark also, we've not yeah. even mentioned this. 
the the Web City Invest in uh, event. Oh, come Let's do an extra. I've literally got to go in five minutes. Got to go in five. No, we're gonna. Well, I'm gonna do the spin the wheel, and then I'm gonna quickly put it up at the end. Okay. Yeah. This is the this is the new like beta version of spin the wheel as well. Of where's the names? Look how much better it looks. Woo! That's, <laughs> that is so sucks. much better than the old one. It looks Pretty exactly tough. the same. <laughs> Let's <laughs> preview. Don't wear the names. Dot com. But anyway, <laughs> here we go. I just made. Oh, it's got it's, it's got a black and white mode. I'm putting it into black mode. So you know, oh. black mode. So you know. Right. Here we go. Here comes the draw. It's on the thirty Thank seconds for the for the extra excitement. Turn the music up while we wait. Oh, oh it's going to be, is it going to be Wilkona? Wilkona? Oh. oh, no. No, it's not. Adrian, is it? Adrian. We're here. Oh, it's going to stop. Adrian yeah. Danila, well done. Congratulations. Um, send us a go head over to niche website dot builders the website type something uh, send us a message in the chat or on the contact form on the site and uh, we can arrange to get you something sent over right this website investing uh, we, we got we've got a event we're running in June it's a virtual event so you can join from anywhere in the world it's called uh, uh, building empires uh, is the kind of brand name I guess but it's all about website investing. It's free as well, by the way. It's free. Buying, building, growing, and selling. So you can, it's free. So far, the speakers we have, Miles Beckler, uh, from Sarah Clow from Ezoic, Alex from WP Eagle, Doug from Niche Type Project. We've got Empire Flippers. We've got Flipper. We've got Ricky from Come School. We've got me and Adam, unfortunately. We've got Scott from Brand Creators. We've got Shauna from Skip Blast. And it's, uh, it's, there's more to be. There's a few more that we're just confirming right now to be announced. So head over. You can register on here. As Adam oh. says, it's free. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. I was just saying, Adrian's literally just said he's already won, so maybe we can squeeze in another another spin as well. He's already won once before. Yeah. That's right, Adrian, you can get another something or other. Oh, music. So, yeah, it's in June. Do it. Oh, shit, I've, I've just like screwed up everybody. There you go. Oh, I didn't remove him. He might win again. Can you imagine? Oh, it's looking like it might. Oh, is it going to be Tiffany? Oh, is it going to be Wayne? No, it's oh, ah, is it going to stop? Oh, it's so close. Tiffany <laughs> just about made it. <laughs> Congratulations, Tiffany. Well, uh, yeah, same, same as before. Drop us a message and we'll get you some makeover. Awesome. That's the... Uh, that's it then. It's a wrap. It's, uh, that's the end of the three-part series. I feel sad that it's over. Yeah. Well, we, we've got a title for next week, though, right? Already. Oh, yeah. You, you get that up, and I'll sing you happy birthday. All right. Do you go for it. Happy birthday <laughs> to <laughs> you. <laughs> I'm not going to do the rest. I, I videoed uh, my wife and, and little boy singing Mark happy birthday this morning. That's that's my contribution to the day. <laughs> hey, love stream episodes. Here we go. Next week, we have everything you need to know about display ads with our special guest, Tyler Bishop from Mesoic. So he's going to be on the website investing show next week. On Age Domain Tuesday, we have another case study, 1301, 200,000 words, 41,000 page views in seven months. So that's a case study there. Um, I'm going to cover off one of the domains in our inventory. Um, do you want to know about what's... Uh, What's on the niche uh, lifestyle show? Yeah, next week. That is building. It's on our channel next week on Wednesday, three PM UK time. So an hour before whatever this one was, depending on where you are in the world. Building a community online is next week's uncatchy name, which we might change to make it more catchy. But building a community online essentially is uh, next week's niche lifestyle show episode. That's it then. Thanks everyone again for listening. Uh, tell a friend, and uh, we'll see you for see you next week. Have a great weekend. Have a good one. Cheers.